Hi friends, my name's Emma and let's talk spooky stuff. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. You can see the title. Today we're talking about the top 50 Netflix original horror and thriller TV shows and movies. That's a long title, I know, but it just really narrows down exactly what we're talking about today. I'm going to go through the intro really quickly just so we can get to the list because we've got a lot to talk about, but it is important that you understand what this list contains. A Netflix original is determined by one of three things, so it can fit into any one of these boxes or all of them. A Netflix original can be a commissioned piece of content. Netflix can have the exclusive international distribution rights or it can be a co-produced piece of content. So that can be co-produced by Netflix and another network. So there is a lot of gray area. I think that when you see that title, Netflix original, you think it is just produced by Netflix, but that is not the case. It's got to do with distribution as well. So just keep that in mind. Of course, with all of my horror and thriller uh, lists, I really want to stick to those themes, but I love genre bending films and horror is definitely not one size fits all. So I have tried to keep it really strict to more horror and thriller content, very dark content. Some of it may be slower, some of it may be action based, but it is purely by definition and genre, horror or thriller. So I wanna say really quickly, a shout out to Russian Doll and The OA, both extremely amazing Netflix original TV shows that unfortunately don't really fit this list, but I highly recommend them. And if they were in this list, that'd be towards the top. The best thing about Netflix originals and the reason I'm doing this list is because it is very accessible for people who have Netflix all around the world. Netflix originals are usually available in most countries. So that's why I feel really comfortable doing this. I have done a top 10 in the past, my favorite Netflix originals. Today I'm back with 50 and a lot has changed. So let's get started. We're gonna start at the bottom. I know I have put these in order of my personal taste. So please listen to the descriptions because something might jump out to you more than it appealed to me, but I do recommend everything on this list. I'm gonna start with the films that are intriguing, but I do feel a little bit more neutral about and obviously end with my favorites. So let's start at number 50. Spanish drama horror Don't Listen follows a young boy and his family who move into a home with a lot of history, but his excitement soon diminishes when he begins to hear voices. The film is a pretty straightforward horror, but I did think it was well executed, even if it was a bit more slow paced and predictable. Norwegian drama horror Cadaver takes place in a dystopian future where the mass population are left homeless and starving after a nuclear disaster. But things take a strange turn when a hotel opens up for a charitable event inviting a family of three to a free dinner and night of entertainment. I feel like I go back and forth about this film daily. This is the wildest journey and at times it feels like two separate movies awkwardly coming together. But it's well worth a watch at least once, especially for its bizarre twists. The drama horror follows a troubled musical prodigy that meets the new star pupil of her former music school. But their relationship is doomed before they even lock eyes. Expect the unexpected with this one. This film had a surprise trailer that dropped at the Super Bowl. Until then, no one realized it was connected to the Cloverfield universe. The Cloverfield Paradox is also the first Netflix film to be released on DVD and Blu-ray. The film takes place in space on the Cloverfield station. We follow a group of scientists who are testing out a device that may solve the energy crisis, but wind up face to face with a dark alternate reality. Starring Micah Monroe, Tao is a sci-fi thriller where we follow a woman who has been captured and is held hostage in a futuristic smart house. Now her only way to escape is to sweet talk the AI in hopes it will sympathize with her. But the plot grows thicker when she realizes she is not the first. Shot in Australia, I Am Mother is a drama sci-fi thriller that plays into the fear of artificial intelligence gone rogue. The film follows a girl who was raised by a robot who was designed to repopulate the earth. But when a stranger arrives, she questions her existence. Rebirth is a thriller about a man who was lured into a self-help program aimed at self-discovery and improvement. But when he arrives for his weekend retreat, it is immediately apparent that this is not what he signed up for. This one is a bit of a roller coaster. I really enjoyed the infuriating feeling of being stuck in the perspective of the lead with no escape. If you like strange winding films, this one is worth a watch. French Canadian film Ravenous is set in a small village in Quebec 
Quebec, where locals struggle to survive during a zombie outbreak. Now a group must escape into the woods to find other survivors like them. Blood Red Sky is a bloody horror fantasy action. The film is about a woman with a mysterious illness that while traveling with her son is forced into action when their plane is hijacked. Now she must step in to protect her child's life. Whatever Happened to Monday is a sci-fi crime thriller that takes place in a time where each family is limited to one child. Here we meet a family with illegal septic tuplets, six identical sisters who avoid detection by each living outside in the world for one day a week. But what happens one day when Monday doesn't return home? Did you forget about this one? Well, I'm here to remind you, Curious Creations is an adorable show where Christine cooks up ghoulish edible creations and interacts with enchanted creatures in her home. It's a wholesome series that will whisk you away into a magical spooky place. Oxygen is a friend sci-fi thriller mystery that is set in primarily one location. The film is about a woman who wakes up in a cryogenic chamber with no memory of how she got there. Now she must remember who she is to escape the nightmare before her oxygen runs out. Bird Box is based on the book of the same name. This movie was actually optioned years before A Quiet Place was produced, but many still believe it was trying to cash in on the sensory horror trend. The horror thriller sci-fi starring Sandra Bullock is about a presence that causes those who see it to commit violent acts against themselves. Now we follow a family who are desperate to survive. Hush is the first of many Mike Flanagan entries on this list because of Flanagan's relationship to Netflix as a distributor. This horror thriller is about a deaf writer who is living in an isolated house struggling to produce her next project. But danger soon finds her in the form of a masked intruder. Now she must protect her herself to survive the night. The film is all about the action scenes and logistics. A classic horror story is a twisted horror mystery that follows a group of strangers traveling through southern Italy. But after an accident, they become stranded and struggle to survive this waking nightmare. This is a vague description, but it's best to go in blind. I promise you, you won't see what's coming next. Little Evil is a comedy fantasy horror that takes the mickey out of every creepy kid trope we've come to expect in horror. The film follows Gary who has just married the woman of his dreams, but finds out that her six-year-old son may be the Antichrist. The film is very light and it's all about the gags, so if you're looking to kick back and have a laugh, this one's for you. I almost didn't mention this one because I knew there'd be backlash, but this is my list and I cannot talk about Netflix originals without talking about Hoobie Halloween. This is a wholesome Halloween film starring Adam Sandler. The film is about Hoobie, who is a figure of mockery, but when danger is looming on Halloween, he's the only one who can save his town. Love, Death and Robots is an anthology series that has a varied array of genres, but it does have a lot of darker episodes. The series is made up of short animated stories that reflect love, death or robots, each made in a different style of animation. If you like creative and brutal animation, check this one out. Stranger Things needs no introduction. This show has transcended the platform, making the actors household names. The drama fantasy horror follows a small town where a young boy disappears. Now his gang of friends come together to find out the hidden truth about the town they call home. There are three seasons to this show, all doused in 80s horror nostalgia. Unfortunately for me, I felt like the first season was the strongest, but I do get why people are still glued to this unwinding mystery. The next season is out in May. The Woman Across the Street from The Girl in the Window. This miniseries is utterly bingeable. It's such a fun, light-hearted mystery thriller. The series takes the piss out of films like The Woman in the Window and The Girl on the Train. Running for eight episodes, it follows a heartbroken alcoholic who witnesses what she believes to be a murder. Now everyone is a suspect, including her and her sanity. Honestly, you love to hate it or hate to love it. You is a Netflix staple and 
And sure, at this point, it's become more of a dark soap, but it's still by all means a thrilling one at that, and especially bloody. Based on the book series of the same name, You is about a love-obsessed psychotic stalker, and the twist is it's told through his eyes and through what we learn to be his sick justifications. It's a dark tale told in a very light and strange way. It's genre-bending and above all, addictive. Calibar is a dark Scottish drama thriller about a weekend away that turns into a nightmare. The film is about two old friends who go away on a weekend hunting trip to a small rural town. But after a violent mistake, their lives are changed forever. Now paranoid, they must keep it together to escape the small town alive. The Babysitter is a comedy horror that is all about being unapologetically over the top. The wacky film stars Samara Weaving as a babysitter who is looking after a young boy. But when this young boy stays up past his bedtime, he discovers that she has invited all of her friends over for a classic satanic ritual. Let me tell you, Brand New Cherry Flavor is a bizarre series based on the novel of the same name by Todd Grimson. The series follows Lisa Nova, an aspiring director that moves to LA in the 90s. But her dreams soon slip out of her hands and she is tempted by the darkness to put a curse on those who wronged her. And I'm not exactly exaggerating when I say it's beyond bizarre. The horror drama fantasy pulls out all of the stops including zombies and kittens. Just you wait and see. I warn you, it's not for the squeamish. Chambers is a drama fantasy horror series that was released in 2019. Ten episodes long, the series is a slow burn that follows a woman who survives a heart transplant and begins to develop different personality traits. Sadly, the show was cancelled after only one season, but it's well worth a watch. Snatch is a choose-your-own-adventure as you follow along with a young programmer who starts to question reality when he adapts a fantasy novel into a video game. The viewer is put in control deciding all of his choices. Although the film is only 90 minutes long, if you do try out every combination, the footage runs for over five hours. It's a fun interactive movie that puts the viewer in the driver's seat. Action comedy horror The Trip is a twisted ride where we follow a dysfunctional couple that head to a remote cabin to reconnect, but both have killer intentions. And unfortunately for them, the twists have only just begun. This is a truly epic, unpredictable experience and it's a lot of fun it's perfect to watch with someone who isn't a full-blown horror fan. I'm not a huge fan of zombie films, but Hashtag Alive is simple yet powerful. The film follows one survivor's nightmare after a pandemic wipes out his city. Now alone in his apartment, he must survive. The film isn't original by concept, but its structure is gripping and it has a really soulful payoff that is well worth the ride. His House is a drama thriller set in the UK. The film is about a refugee couple that escape war-torn South Sudan, but struggle to adapt to their new life in a small English town. Their surroundings are one thing, but the trauma lurking within their walls proves to be the breaking point. This is a heavy film that will make your skin crawl and your heart sink. This UK-Canadian co-production was filmed in Romania, but of course is set in Sweden. The horror mystery thriller follows a group of college friends that reunite for a trip through a Swedish forest, but soon grow paranoid about an entity stalking them. Australian represent this Aussie drama horror sci-fi stars Martin Freeman, and it's about one man's journey and struggle to protect his daughter after an epidemic spreads across the country. It's a very soulful horror that is disturbing at times. The landscape is haunting and unique. Highly recommended for drama horror fans. Let me know if you cried too. I have been non-stop talking about The Swarm since I watched it back in October last year. The French drama fantasy horror follows a single mother who is determined to make her locust business successful. And when she finds a solution, she will go to dangerous lengths to make it happen, regardless of the violent consequences. Archive 81 is a fresh Netflix original series that is based on the podcast 
cast of the same name. The drama horror mystery takes place inside an isolated home where a video archivist is hired to live and restore a collection of tapes. But the content of the tapes becomes all-consuming when he begins to put the pieces together. 10 Cloverfield Lane is the sister sequel to Cloverfield but only because it takes place in the same universe. The best part about this movie is it's something completely different to the original. It changes the entire fear of the first film. Now it's not what's happening outside but who to trust on the inside. Starring John Goodman and Mary Elizabeth Winstead, the film is about a woman who is held captive in a bunker by a man who insists that the Earth is too dangerous for them both. The dynamic of the characters is what this film is all about. The action drama horror is well worth a spin. The Call is a twisted crime horror mystery about two women living in different times who are able to communicate through a phone call. But with every action comes an opposite reaction. And their knowledge of each other's existence proves powerful in many ways. The special effects aspect of this film is stunning. It's a story that will leave you on the edge of your seat. Annihilation is a tricky one because it was released in some cinemas but is still considered a Netflix original. The psychological sci-fi horror stars Natalie Portman as a woman who is exploring a mysterious quarantine zone with a group of experts adamant to find out what powers it possesses. The film is a beautiful metaphor for dealing with grief, but for all of its stunning scenery, it has an overwhelming darkness. You won't look at bears the same way. This Spanish sci-fi horror thriller made waves in 2019. It's simple yet damning concept had everyone talking. The film takes place in a vertical structure where a platform of food travels from top to bottom each day, stopping for two minutes on each level. Those at the top feast and those on the bottom starve because there's no balance if the top takes what they please. So what happens if someone rebels against the system? It's a thrilling film that you want to watch well after eating. Juon Origins is a series that did more than capture the essence of the films it's based on, which is really rare for a spin-off series to do. Origins acts like a prequel to the Grudge series and follows the story of the haunted residence and how the curse was imprinted. It's often overlooked because it stayed very true to the original Japanese stylization. It's slower, more dramatic, and has very brutal moments. But it was a lot more disturbing than I first anticipated. And at only six episodes long, 30 minutes each, it's very binge-worthy at your own risk. Marianne, I know I say this awful with my Australian accent, is a French horror series that doesn't get a lot of love, which is a shame. And it was cancelled after season one in 2020, which I think was was a huge loss, but it is still very much worth your time. This eight episode series follows a famous horror writer who returns to her hometown to find out the terror she dreams about is real. It is a super dark series that is perhaps one of the most spooky entries for Netflix originals. Happy nightmares. Okay, we're nearly at the top 10 and the next one gets three spots for a very special reason. It is the Fear Street Trilogy. The spot of 11, 10 and 9 belongs to the Fear Street Trilogy. It felt wrong not to put them together. The series was originally meant to be released on the big screen, but due to the pandemic, the distribution moved to Netflix, making it a Netflix original. The films take place in different decades, but in the same location as we were Watch a group of friends get to the bottom of why their town of Shadyside is linked to an ancient curse. Based on the R.L. Stein book series of the same name, it's a slick slasher with lots of brutal kills and a great payoff. Bly Manor is the highly anticipated follow-up to the anthology Haunting of series, which we will get to shortly. The Haunting of Bly Manor is a loose adaptation of the novella The Turn of the Screw by Henry James, but the series is a nod to many other entries in his body of work. It follows a nanny who moves into a haunted house to look after two troubled children. Cam is a brutal horror that pulls out all of the dramatics. The film is based on the writer Isa Mazay's life Life as a cam girl and I highly recommend checking out her book cam girl as well but there's a lot of fiction in this one and it's worked into metaphors about self-reflection and identity the film follows Alice a cam girl who discovers that she has been replaced on her web show by a replica it's a twisty ride that emulates Alice in Wonderland at times and if you haven't seen this one yet 
definitely make time. Fair warning, it's about to get a little Flanagan heavy. And this next film was the first Mike Flanagan film I ever watched and it really caught me by surprise. Unfortunately, due to distribution issues, it didn't get a proper marketing run. The film was released silently on Netflix a few years after its initial release, so it's often overlooked. Before I Wake is an emotional horror about an adopted boy who possesses a powerful ability to manifest his dreams and nightmares. Mike Flanagan's passion project Midnight Mass is a twisty TV show that puts the emphasis on drama horror. The series follows a troubled man who returns home to his small village on an isolated island, but at the same time a charismatic priest who offers to challenge him and restore the faith in the community arrives. But not everything is as it seems. This show is a slow and soulful look within, which isn't too surprising for the creator, but its pacing works well with its payoff. The Haunting of Hill House cemented Mike Flanagan's place in Netflix Originals history as the master of horror TV. The series is an interwoven story of a family in turmoil who must come together after a tragedy. The show goes between two timelines following the present and 26 years earlier when the family moved into their house which harbours darkness. It's loosely based on the 1959 novel of the same name by Shirley Jackson and leaves plenty of Easter eggs along the way. Way. Although Black Mirror started as a Channel 4 show, it quickly moved to Netflix and became a staple original show. The anthology series is a dark and disturbing science fiction thriller inspired by Twilight Zone. The show explores the dark side of technology and what the future will bring. It's 100% worth your time, just don't bill me for the therapy. Two left, can you guess what I've left off so far? Let me know what your favorite Netflix originals are and let me know what you think my top two are. Are you ready? Mike Flanagan's adaptation of my favorite Stephen King book could have gone one of two ways, but he truly nailed it. Gerald's Game is the story of a woman dealing with her psychological trauma after being trapped handcuffed to a bed on what was meant to be a romantic getaway. Here she is forced to face her inner demons and possible entities in the room. Carla Gugino gives a powerful performance as the lead Jessie. This film is cathartic and disturbing all at the same time. Okay, number one, I don't mean to be dramatic, but this TV show changed my life. <laughs> I'm such a nerd, but that's why I'm here, you know? Dark is a three season German TV series that begins with the disappearance of two children in a tight knit town where everyone knows everyone and secrets connect them all. The thriller mystery goes so far down the rabbit hole, you may never come out the same. I certainly didn't. Each season brings a new twist to the show and it ends in the most cosmic aligned way possible. This has one of the greatest endings to a TV show I've ever seen seen. Dark is a must for all thriller fans, for all horror fans, for all fans of TV and movies, art, life. <laughs> watch Dark. <laughs> Basically this whole video was a ploy to get you to watch Dark. If you haven't, you can thank me later. It is truly my favorite piece of Netflix original content. Let me know what your favorites are down below. Of course, I could only include 50 because this was a lot as it was, but I'm really glad that you stuck with me to the end. And if you did, you're a champ. And because you've stuck with me to the end, I've left a secret link down there that will give you all of this list on paper. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you haven't subscribed, I'd love to have you here. I do two videos every single week talking about horror movies, talking about thrillers, giving you a lot of recommendations just like today. And I hope you're having a fantastic day. Stay safe and stay spooky. Bye friends. Ooh.